Hey, we're back with another Science at Work video, this time featuring Gene Cernan, the last person to walk on the moon. We're absolutely thrilled with the pictures and questions that we've been receiving, some of them from as far away as Malaysia and Spain. So first of all, Gene's going to tell us how we got to the moon and what it's like to live in space. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to these presentations by me, uh, Gene Cernan, on the Apollo missions uh, to the moon. And first of all, can I just say how oh, bowled over I am by the huge, huge number of uh, questions that I've been uh, been presented with. And Aaron, Sarah, and Mark then asked me, you know, what's it like to uh, to be in space? What is it like in space? Well, of course, one of the first things you'll notice is that everything starts to float around uh, because of the weightless condition that we have in space. And so for a little while, uh, you're adjusting to what's left and what's right and what's up here and what's down there and so on and so forth. And then uh, Aaron um, asks me uh, from Spain, well, if there's no gravity, uh, which makes everything float, how do you go to the toilet? Yes, there is gravity. Earth's got gravity, the moon's got gravity, the sun's got, there is loads of gravity out there. So how do we do a poo in space? Hmm. You tell the other two guys to move as far away as possible. And it's gonna take about 30 minutes, so it's uh, quite a long procedure. You drop your pants, you get a plastic bag, and in the weightless condition of space, you deftly remove the two sticky labels on the plastic bag. You stick it to your butt and then apply a force then you clean yourself up with some baby wipes, put them in the bag, and you write on it whose it was and what time you did it, and that's all stored away. And the reason why you're given your food in a specific order is that the doctors want to know what order it went in and what order it comes out. So we're heading towards the moon. Hopefully we get captured. We're in uh, lunar orbit. Now we're going to land on the moon. pardon why does nobody ever go to the moon anymore and do you think we'll ever go back to the moon Aston Zach that's your job you're gonna go back to the moon because uh, Jack actually asks me a very uh, good question would you rather be the last man on the moon or the first man on Mars we're gonna go to Mars or at least humanity is gonna go to Mars and in order to do that we've got to learn to live on another celestial body so we're gonna go back to the moon and learn to live on there before we can go to Mars how about this Amber, Chloe, or whoever. How about this? The first man on the moon? The first woman on Mars. That's a challenge. I'd love to see that. I'd love to hear that. That would be great. And I have one last question uh, from uh, Arthur uh, from a place called the New Forest. That sounds really nice, uh, Arthur, if you live there. He says, do you need to know your times tables to be an astronaut? Now, I don't know whether this is a slight conversation you've had with your, your folks or your teachers, but... The bad news is, yeah, you do. My advice to you, don't ever count yourself out. Uh, you'll never know how good you were going to be unless you try. So, you know, dream the impossible. And maybe the possible will happen. Thank you for listening. We've got another Science at Work video next week with two real scientists who are really looking forward to seeing your pictures and questions. We'd love for you to be involved next week, so don't forget to download the activity sheet and we'll see you then. Bye!